Hello everyone, this is Amruta. I am here to explain the basic and advanced concepts of biology. In this particular series, I will be dealing with grade 12 biology concepts which are relevant to both HSC and CBSC. So let's get started with our very first chapter, Reproduction in Plants. Okay, so our topic for today is reproduction in plants, which is the first chapter in grade 12, both in HSC as well as CBSC. So uh, before we start off, I want you all to be thorough with your basics first. So let us understand the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. So I'm going to mention the two here and I'm going to write down a few points of differences between the two. If you all think that this is important for you to note it down, definitely at any point of time, you may pause the video and feel free to note any important points you need to. All right. So the first point, if you see the basic differences between asexual and sexual reproduction is that asexual reproduction involves a single parent. Right. There is only one parent involved in asexual reproduction. Whereas in sexual reproduction, there are two parents involved. The two parents are namely male parent and a female parent. Right? That is one obvious point between the two. Coming to the next point, talking about gametes. If you guys know what are gametes, gametes are basically sex cells or the cells that are involved in reproduction. So, there are no gametes formed in asexual reproduction. There are no gamete formation. Whereas in sexual reproduction, gametes are formed. Right? All right. Coming to the third point. Now, since there are no gametes formed in asexual reproduction, there will be no formation of zygote. Right. I hope you understand the term zygote here. Zygote means a single cell which is a fusion product of a male and a female gamete. So there is no zygote formed in case of an asexual reproduction. Whereas in case of a sexual reproduction, a zygote is formed. Right. Coming to the fourth point now, which is very, very important for you all to note it down. In asexual reproduction, as there is involvement of a single parent, the offspring or the progeny would be genetically identical. Very, very important for you to note it down. Genetically identical progeny. Or you may also call progeny as offsprings. That's the same term basically and there is one more term which is used for genetically identical offsprings or the progeny if you guys know you may pause the video here and think about the term used for that so it is called as clone right clones are genetically identical organisms and if you talk about sexual reproduction these organisms, the offsprings are not genetically identical, rather they are quite different from each other. And there is a term used for, you know, uh, major or minor differences that are seen among individuals and the term is variation. Okay, so variation is observed or it is seen. And... Uh, you must be aware that there is a process which occurs in sexually reproducing organisms which leads to variation the and there is a term used for that process you guys can pause the video here think over it i would just highlight this word over here variation which is important in sexual reproduction i want you to think about the process that gives rise to variation all right. So that was uh, in brief about, uh, you know, understanding the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. Okay. So let us look into various modes of asexual reproduction in plants. 
I have shown a few images of the various plants over here. We will look into this one by one. Starting with the first one over here, if you guys can identify the image, well, yes, that's a spirogyra. And the mode of reproduction seen in spirogyra is fragmentation. So let me mention fragmentation here. Yes, so fragmentation is a method or a mode of asexual reproduction seen in spirogyra. I'll mention the uh, word spirogyra here. Right, spirogyra is a type of algae that is generally found in freshwater. And this is how the parent spirogyra looks like. It is filamentous in structure and it breaks down into small pieces or fragments by the process of fragmentation. The word fragmentation itself says the process of formation of fragments. And what are fragments? Fragments are small pieces or small parts. So the entire filament of spirogyra divides its body into several fragments and then each fragment gives rise to an adult spirogyra. That's how asexually spirogyra can reproduce. Coming to the second one, the second image over here. Uh, this is uh, an yeast cell which undergoes the process of budding. I'll mention here budding. And this is yeast which is a type of a fungus. So yeast undergoes a process of budding in which there's a small outgrowth which is formed on the body of the parent yeast cell. This is a parent yeast cell and there's a small outgrowth formed which we call as a bud. And as you can see in the following images, the nucleus starts to divide. It migrates into the bud and when the bud completely grows and develops, it detaches from the parent cell and grows as a separate individual. Also make a note that at the same time, many buds or a chain of buds can be formed in yeast. That was about budding in yeast. Coming to the third one, which is spore formation. Let me mention that here. This is called as spore formation. I'm sure some of you all must have heard about spore formation in your lower grades and you must be able to recall a rhizopus or a bread mold when you hear the term spore formation. That's right. Bread mold is an example of spore formation. But the image that I have shown over here is of Chlamydomonas, which is an algae. Let me mention that here. This is Chlamydomonas. So Chlamydomonas is a type of algae which is generally found in you know stagnant water or even in sea water and as you can see asexually Chlamydomonas is able to produce spores these spores are called as zoo spores and if you can see in the image the zoo spores are flagellated this is a flagella which is used for locomotion so this is how asexually by formation of zoo spores Chlamydomonas can undergo reproduction and it, each zoospore is able to produce another adult chlamydomonas. Moving to the next image here, this is penicillium and the mode of reproduction observed in penicillium is formation of conidia. Let me mention that here. Formation of Conidia and the name of the organism you can see in the image is Penicillium. Uh, so Penicillium is a type of a fungus and what you can see in the image here is the hypha. This is called as a hypha, right? The entire body of Penicillium is called as a mycelium whereas these long filamentous structures are called as hyphae. 
and these specialized hyphae over here in this case are called as conidiophores. Let me mention that over here and you guys can make a note of it if you feel that is difficult to remember. This is called as conidiophores. Conidiophores are the special hyphae and on the tip of the conidiophore, so this is the conidiophore and on the tip of the conidiophore there are small spores, there are these asexual non-motile spores that are produced and these are called as conidia, right? So I have mentioned conidia here already, conidia are asexual non-motile spores which can grow into an adult penicillium once appropriate conditions arrive. Alright, so that was all about the various modes of asexual reproduction in plants. Let us now understand vegetative reproduction or also called as vegetative propagation. So, you guys can make a note that vegetative reproduction is a type of asexual reproduction. Very important to note vegetative reproduction is a form or is a type of asexual reproduction. So it does not involve two parents. It is basically any vegetative part of the plant like the root, stem or a leaf that is able to give rise to an entire new plant, right? So it's the vegetative parts of plants. I'll mention that here, vegetative parts of plants like the leaf, stem or roots which are able to give rise to a new plant. Now over here you can see a few images and these images are of artificial vegetative propagation. So we are now going to try and understand what are the different methods of artificial vegetative propagation. All right, so we'll start with the first one over here. As you can see in the image, there is a stem being cut, right? So the method, the first method you can see in the image is of cutting. So what happens in cutting is that a small part of the stem can be cut off and it can be planted in the soil. Now the part of the stem that you're going to cut here usually has a bud. Let me mention that here. It has got a bud. Important to note this, right? You guys must have heard about a pical bud or axillary bud. Yes, I'm talking about the same type of bud. So a bud usually has the potential to grow new shoots. So you have to choose a stem, a part of the stem, such that it will bear one or more buds. So that when you plant it in the soil, it is able to propagate or give rise to new shoots. For an example to remember for this is rose, rose plant can be used as a stem cutting whereas for root cutting okay some plants also have roots which can be cut and which can be used in this process so blackberry is one such example of root cutting all right moving to the second image here this is of grafting I'm sure some of you all have heard about grafting already. Okay, so grafting is another process of artificial vegetative propagation wherein the stalk and a sign can be joined to form a new plant. Now first we need to understand what is a sign and what is a stalk here. Okay, two terms important. You can make a note of this. I will write it here cyan and a stock. Okay, so let me explain that to you first. 
cyan is a part of plant which is grafted on a stock now stock is the plant that is already rooted in the soil you can see this lower part is the stock right which is already rooted in the soil and cyan is a part which has leaves or the upper part of the shoot which is taken from another plant and cyan and a stock are combined in such a way that there is an internal connection between them so it is tightly tied around each other with the help of a cloth like this so this process is called as grafting there is also another technique which is quite similar to grafting it is called as a bud grafting i'll mention that here it is called as bud grafting at any point of time you feel that there is something important for you to note down feel free to pause the video and you can note it down so bud grafting is a process in which you take a part from a plant which has a bud and you graft that in stock of another plant so bud grafting you can say is a part of grafting or is another method of grafting all right moving to the third image here this is called as layering this is called as layering now what you can see in the image here what happens in layering is one of the stem here as you can see here one of the stem is bent and it touches the soil here okay and the point where it touches you can pour some soil on the point here so that new shoots and new roots can grow over here right so that is a process of layering a shoot or a stem is bent it touches the soil the part can be covered with a soil and new shoots and new roots can grow and a new plant can be formed this is called as layering this is the third method of artificial vegetative propagation coming to the fourth and the most interesting one is plant tissue culture or you can simply write it as tissue culture for some of you the concept may not be new but for some people it's a totally new concept so let me clarify what is tissue culture so tissue as in a group of cell right and culturing meaning to grow in a laboratory so in tissue culture you take a part of a plant which is generally called as an explant i'll write down here it is called as an explant you take an explant which is a part of plant you grow that in a lab providing suitable sterile conditions and in nutrient medium for example in the image if you can see there is a test tube inside which there is a nutrient medium a gel based nutrient medium and you can see how the plant grows here so a similar nutrient medium is used in which you inoculate your explant and suitable conditions are provided so that the explant can grow and terminate into a new plantlet now before a plant is formed there is an undifferentiated mass of cells called as callus that is formed here i am going to mention that term here callus callus is an undifferentiated mass of cells that is produced inside the nutrient medium once you inoculate the explant and then the callus is provided with another medium such that the roots and shoots can then form so tissue culture is another way of propagating plants artificially but in the laboratory so these are all the ways of vegetative reproduction in plants so i hope you all followed the topic from the first chapter if you find this video helpful do like share and subscribe to my channel and hit on the bell icon to get notified about my future uploads thanks a lot